Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome back to more Hearts of Iron 4, Kaiserreich playing as the Russian Empire. Alright, so we have properly uh, removed the Republic, Dmitri is of course going to be uh, our Emperor, our Tsar, and we are gearing up for a war down here against the Don Cuban Union to take over the oil. Zergling, you're going to have to move somewhere else now. Uh, so, all is going well for a bit of early aggression. The question really is going to be how are the Germans and other such folks going to respond? I suspect they're not going to respond very much at all because they don't want to upset Russia. I hope that's the case, because otherwise we're going to find ourselves in a really unpleasant situation. There's the radio done, so we have a bit more reinforcement rate. Okay, could go for radar and stuff. Um, it is October of 1937. What else do we really, really, really want? Upgrades to... What the frickin' heck? Is that a scout plane with like a little helicopter thing on it? Russia, what were you doing? Let's go ahead and upgrade our bombers. Yes, let's go ahead and get an upgrade for my bombers so we have at least some other air capacity available. And actually, that reminds me, we should probably go ahead and set up some of our planes. Uh, these guys, for example, down over Mia in the western steppes so that we can make use of them, at least moderately. Not that they're particularly good, but planes are planes. Air superiority is air superiority. Crackdown on the Terek host. The impatient and short-sighted Pyotr Krosnov, Krasnov has made the mistake of escalating the crisis and begun a crackdown on the Terek Cossacks and the Russian separatists in this regime. The eyes of the world are on the ongoing atro uh, atrocities, and the support for the Don Kuban across the planet is wavering. The fools have played into our hand. Oh, okay, so that's good. That would imply to me, then, that uh, less people are going to be angry when I kill the Don Kuban Union because they're basically delegitimizing themselves. Maybe. Cool, yeah, no, uh, that, that actually works out great for me. They are indeed falling into my hands. <laughs> By the way, what are the aggression options we were supposed to have gotten against things like Poland, Romania, Austria, and so on? I don't see any evidence that anything actually happened out of that. We have no new decisions. I've got no war goals. I don't really know what they meant by this. This is the main reason I picked it up was you're going to get extra expansion options against a bunch of people, but nothing seems to have materialized against that. So I don't really know why. By the way, we get decisions to attack Alash Orda and the Islamic Federation of Turkestan. Well, neither of those are crucial. What resources? Ah, Panama took two states. Congratulations. Panama! Bow, 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 bow. Uh, do you have any good resources? Yeah, actually, Alash Orda has a fair bit. They got some good steel, aluminum, chromium, other things I could really use for my heavy tanks. Turkestan doesn't matter that much. But it will get me in position to go for a little spearhead attack against uh, Iran. Man, wouldn't it be fun to have Russia take over this entire region right along here? Blocking off all of Europe from land routes to Asia. They must pay a tax to use my Silk Road. Only that's how it worked. Effectively the biggest sound toll of them all. <sighs> oh well, that's not how it's going to be. Alright, few more days until we get the crisis on the dawn. Please nobody make it worse for me. I want to conquer all of these guys. I want oil. That's really what I want. Plight of the Terek Cossacks. The Terek Cossack host, located in the eastern parts, has sensed our resurgence and chosen to declare their allegiance to us, causing chaos in Grozny, Vladkavkaz, and Petrovsk. I'm doing my best. Dozens of Terek leaders have been arrested and pro-Russian protests have been suppressed by force, and thanks to the ever-seeing eyes of the Okhrana, these atrocities have been widely publicized. Public opinion in Russia is greatly in of the intervention, and the world seems to not bat an eye. All right, we declare our war. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, so we could go for some more aggression. The thing is, at some point, we're going to need to worry about um, such things as compliance. So this is where Neo-Slavism would be useful. I also do want to work on, let's say, things like the Military Production Act for a bit of extra stability and some decisions to unlock more factories. And this removes the national spirit of economic depression, which is like another 2% consumer goods as well as other stuff. So all of that could be good. Resource gain efficiency by another 10%, or do we want factory output? Um, Great question. I actually also need this. I need a lot of this economic stuff, as well as the military stuff, if I want to continue getting, let's say, uh, some armor technology. There's a lot of things we need, is what it comes down to. A lot of things we need. Um, I think I'm going to try to remove the economic depression, and we're going to try to have the option to unlock some more factories, right? Because as much as I would like the resource gain, factory output is always going to be good, as well as we would get, hopefully, the ability to spend some political capital, just get three more civilian factories, which adds up. 
Adds up a fair bit. All right, so we're at war. Let's go ahead and attack with my offensive unit. Oh, look at that. They go and squish. Uh, do you guys, you guys have indeed left yourself open, so I say we just go ahead and start pushing in. Why don't you guys stay behind? Why don't you stay behind? If you're going to leave yourself open like this, I say we take it. Let's see, you are going to go through here, and then you're going to go this way. Also, you are going to go this way. There you go. We really don't need to be attacking them like this. It's okay not to be, but whatever. They're trying to attack across the river, and it's apparently leading to some problems. Tell you what. Um, as fun as this is, I say, all of you, hold. Stop your attack. Stop wasting my stuff. Let's instead start sneaking across using these tanks, because tanks are fast. These light tanks have almost arrived where desired. We need to prevent these guys from... Uh, stopping me, or rather cutting me off. I don't want to lose any tanks. That would obviously be disastrous. Switzerland joins a faction. Not neutral, huh? They are joining, ah? Uh, they are joining the faction with Austria. Yes, they're trying to resist the uh, bloodthirsty French. So, I'm not going to take too many extra attacks across the river. But, with these guys being surrounded... That would imply to me that they have nowhere to go and are going to lose all of their supply and die! Which I appreciate. So that's pretty much the war done, thanks to my Mobile Warfare Doctrine doing what Mobile Warfare's Doctrines do best. Which basically is to surround your opponent and then crush. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens. I'm telling you, Mobile Warfare Doctrine doesn't get enough love. It's good. Superior Firepower is awesome in almost every circumstance, but... Mobile Warfare is great, especially for these exact moments where you can just use your light tanks to uh, crush everything in sight. That ends the war. We get your equipment and you're dead. Thank you. Take all states. Can't take all states. I've never understood the point of this. If there's no one else in the war, then I should be able to automatically annex them. Excuse me. I shouldn't need to worry about the fact that I don't have enough score to full annex. All I can do is just pass forever. Whatever. We got all this, which means I have a new source of oil. Hooray! I don't really know who I'm going to attack next. It's probably going to end up being a Lash Orda because we'll have those decisions. Excavation tech being done is quite nice. Um, let's go ahead and start researching on the research speed. We could work on the radar tech. I don't know that I want that, though. 1938. Still too early for some tanks. Could do support companies. I think instead I'm going to go for some extra infantry defense. As well as breakthrough and so on. That should be nice. My only question is, do we bother leaving an army down here? I can't justify a war goal until world tension gets up to 50%. Well, it's going to be a little while before I get the war goals to go and take on Alash Orda, I think. Maybe? I mean, I guess I could prioritize it. I just kind of figure I really want to get things like this done. I want to get a lot of factories, is what it comes down to. I want to get all the factories. How are we doing on that front? Pretty good. We actually now have, um... 57. Math. It's hard, apparently, sometimes. Math. Uh, it says we have 57 civilian factories working. That's not bad. Uh, I'm sorry. Who, who, who just, who just what now? Assyria declared their own war against the Ottoman Empire. If I recall correctly in Kaiserreich from our Egypt campaign... Oh, prayers to the Tsar. Well, once in a while, it turns out, maybe we actually get some benefit out of the church. Um, Assyria and many other, like Syria and stuff, can break free in the Ottoman Empire. In fact, one of your goals is to uh, try to destabilize the Ottoman Empire so they break apart, I think. All right, uh, I would like to go ahead and research the industrial concern. Uh, as much as electronics and stuff would be good... I'm going to go for the civilian and military factory construction speed because it's just great. And it lets me finish out a lot of these factories sooner, and actually pretty soon we're going to finally start making some military factories. Military Production Act is Dunskies. Okay, um... We could go for the resources and then a ton of infrastructure, and that would make it even easier for me to build a lot of factories quickly. However, we could go for this. Let's do it. And you know what? Forget this front line against Azerbaijan. I can't justify anything against it anyway, anytime soon. So instead, we're going to set up an army right along over here to try and crush through over here. You are going to set up a planning bonus to go through here. Light blue, you're going to be trying to push the line along here, and you are going to try to push down and along here. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and... Oh, 
not civilian factories, military factories. Hmm. Is it worth spending the military power to start working on that? Maybe. Would it be better to start getting better tanks? See, the fun thing about a medium tank manufacturer is we'd be able to start fielding a lot of them in 1939 pretty quick. 10% reduction in production costs? I mean, it's pretty substantial, but still. Chief of Staff. Armor attack and so on? Yeah. Chief of Army, Armored Spearhead. Better speed and breakthrough for armor. I mean, that's great. I think we're going to go ahead and spend some political power just getting some more of our military factories. I mean, it's much faster than building them from scratch, so when we have the opportunity, I kind of feel like we ought to take it, so that's what we're going to do. Another coup in Bulgaria? What is happening down here? No, that looks like the same person to me. Wait, same person is... Well, now they're paternal autocrats. So they got the same leader. They just keep changing their ideology. What? You're a bunch of weirdos, you know that, right? That's that's what you are, you're a bunch of weirdos. Road to war, political power, base support, and decisions to attack isolated countries in Europe. <gasps> Ooh. Could be good. Uh, I don't feel like my army is nearly large enough to justify all of that quite yet. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the compliance growth speed, plus the manpower so we can field larger armies. If we can just get enough military factories and start producing enough guns, uh, we can start training up a lot more units. We actually are going to need to start training up a lot more artillery. Much as I hate to do it because, for whatever reason, we started with a load of artillery-based templates. So I'm going to continue trading some... You know what? No, we just need... We don't need that. I'm going to train up at least a little bit more equipment. We're not going to be training up any more of these guys. Right? Pretty sure we're not going to be training up any more of these 20 combat widths over here. It's probably not worth it. You guys would benefit, I think, from getting some engineers. Uh, do we have enough support equipment? No! Good lord. Nowhere near enough support equipment to get all these units. Yeah, we actually started with a fairly large army. Just nowhere near supplied enough, apparently. Um, well, alright. So what are the decisions as far as being able to attack people? It costs only 10 political power. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do it. In two weeks, we're going to attack. You have no faction. You have barely any troops. You're easy pickings. I s <laughs> yeah, we're gonna kill you now. I just heard a weird sound. Did we just finish with our... Oh, I think we just finished with our intelligence thing. Completed. We got an extra bonus in industry. Thank you. What did we get? I wish I told you right out. All right, let's go ahead and begin spying in Germany once again. Hmm. We'll do this. There we go. We'll just start spying in all these areas. Okay, so what did we get exactly? Um, I think we got a bonus, not a tech. Yeah, we got a two-year ahead of time reduction. Oh my god. In some stuff. This is great. Though. Though. I think what happened is we stole a tech that... Um, I think we actually have all... Okay. No. I think what happened here is there aren't any techs that Germany has researched that we don't already have. So instead of giving me a free tech somewhere, we just got a two-year ahead-of-time bonus, which means I can get Construction 3 way ahead of time. This is great. I'm going to keep doing that. God, that's awesome. Thank you. The Tsar is unhappy about food prices. He recently uh, visited a local store, and he was outraged by the high prices of meat. Three hoorays for our caring Tsar. Okay, do we do anything to fix it, or are we just going to complain? Because I'm pretty sure all we're doing there is we're just complaining. Weather, well, it's fine. The Russian Empire declares its war. Good. All right, let's go ahead and start marching over. Oh. Who did we select? Let's start marching over to some of these victory points. Da 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 da. We're gonna take all of your stuff. Grab this, Uralsk, and all that. You guys push down around. Nope, nope, nope. Push down around over here. And one of you guys push down around over here just so we can keep them contained a little bit. You guys push down around over here. You guys go along over here as well. There you go. You guys are going to push forward and we'll grab Turgai. Except for you, you're going to go the other way so we can pin down even more effectively. You're going to come down this way and then you're going to come down over this way. And then you guys are going to come all the way over where? Let's go down this way. 
We're gonna go here, because we can, except for some of you guys who are going to stop once you get up to here, so that our tanks have something to do. You guys are also gonna come up down this direction, except for the tank who is gonna come over where? Let's go all the way down to Pishpek. That sounds fun. Infantry, get down here. You grab this, and you guys get down over here and surround these forces. Why are you attacking? Tank, stop being an idiot. Just get down here to pitch back. Thank you. Don't see any reason to fight. I mean, if we can win this with, like, basically 20 bullets shot, then why lose anything at all? Um, the Russian Alash War. We've lost zero men, and we somehow managed to kill 27 in that one shot. Beautiful. Well done. I much appreciate... Oh, they're attacking me because I apparently started moving. Well, I guess we're going to go ahead and have to pin you down now. You have committed me to spending some of my manpower to kill you. Not that it matters, but just understand I'm very unhappy with you. East Turkestan asks to buy my aircrafts. Uh, I mean, I don't care about trade relations. Um, consumer goods goes up for 30 days. Wait, I, 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 do I get nothing out of this except for some political power? Because I don't care about trade relations with these guys. Gains East Turkestan aircraft sale, which increases my consumer goods and reduces my factory output. I don't, I don't, I don't really see a lot of advantage in this, uh, except for the fact that it's very short and it gets me 20 political power. You know, I actually could use political power as a thing. It's only 30 days, but that gets me more than 30 days worth of political power, which I can use to then immediately reinvest in getting myself another military factory. So, okay. Okay, we'll do it. It feels questionable, but we'll do it. Okay, we've grabbed pretty much all of the victory points. We're just waiting to grab this last one right down here. What are we looking at as far as casualties? 700 men dead. We've killed 9,000 of theirs. As soon as we walk into the capital, that should be the end of it. Which won't take long. Uh, tanks are well on the way. These guys are a heck of a lot faster. That's for stinking sure. Um, but we should be getting in here right about now. So we're going to lose less than a thousand men. And we get to take all of this. I'd say that that's not a bad trade all in all for Russia. Wait, why haven't we won yet? You kidding me? What's left? Hey, you guys haven't capitulated. All right. But we've got all your victory points. Oh, you're one of those nations that's so tiny and inconsequential. That even if we take all your victory points, you don't capitulate, aren't you? You're my least favorite type. All right, fine. The good news is they have, like, no supply whatsoever because, I mean, they have no cities to generate supply. So we can just march right on in there. All we have to do is just take literally any territory at all. Socialist Republic of Honduras joins the Revolutionary Front. I don't know if I'm familiar with that one. Okay. Still pushing, you can see they got a lot of troops moving on several different fronts. Yeah, we're taking a few more casualties now, but it still shouldn't amount to much. Yeah, okay, we've now lost 1.1 thousand. Oh, dear. But literally anything, literally anything will do. Hey, bombers! Okay, let's go ahead and get ahead of time on that construction tech, please, and thank you. 40 days? Look at that! Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, I'm starting to see a little bit more possibility for this whole, uh stealing of the blueprints thing the only trick to that is you have to have three spies otherwise you literally can't do the mission so i mean if you're playing as a minor nation that can't get three spies you might find yourself in a little bit of trouble all right we gotta take all of alash orda you guys shouldn't have broken free and declared your independence that's all i'm saying it was a really stupid ploy of yourselves shouldn't have done it all right let's go ahead and move you guys along here and your goal is basically to just push down over to these victory points along yep and you guys are going to do something similar right along over them yeah and you're going to do the same thing trying to push all the way along yep and blah 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 we're going to keep these guys next they don't have much but i mean whatever we can get it pretty quick and it's not going to cost me much of anything so i feel like we might as well annexation decisions oh right i forgot this is after all kaiserreich which means they change the system up so that you have to, you know, annex the territory and then decide what to do with them. And every time you annex somebody, you get to uh, lose some stability and stuff. Yep, 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 yep. We have to select an option with these guys. This is going to be an absolute pain in the patootie. Or you can spend a frick ton of political power to occupy them and keep them. Yeah, I don't, I've never liked this system. Um, alright, well, let's go ahead and get ready to attack Turkestan just because we can. Um... 
even tiny nations end up costing you a lot. Like, we may end up just releasing these guys and then just annexing them the old-fashioned way. But even that ends up taking a lot of political power. It's just spread out more. That's it. It's the only advantage. I don't know. I've never liked it. Never liked the system. Never liked it once. But here we are. What is this? The Legation Council recently renewed its focus on expanding the profits of free trade for all member states. Uh, so they get a holiday, we lose some political power, but we get consumer goods reduction for a little while. What? Oh. Oh. Well, okay then. Thank you for even more fa- I mean, that feels like less factories, though. It's the same amount of factories. Consumer goods isn't working the way I thought it was supposed to. Whatever, it's still probably pretty good for you. Norway finally died. Congratulations, Sweden, I suppose. You're kind of deciding between being a national populist and a king. Fun. All right, we got Neo-Slavism, which means the compliance will grow a little bit faster, which is going to be good for the places we're taking over. Could go for the research speed. I like that idea. Road to War sounds fun, um, but what I really want to do, I think, is start working on resource prospection and start getting that infrastructure so we can build out more of these factories even faster. Sweden has joined the Reichspacht. Ah, okay. So now they're a part of that massive alliance network, huh? I don't much approve of that, but whatever. I suppose there's not a whole lot I can do about it. If I went for the road to war, do we actually get to go and kill Finland? I think they're considered isolated at that point. Yeah, we probably do get to go and kill Finland. Maybe that's good. I don't know. One thing I would love to do is get um, the Germans to give up on Ukraine so I can take this over. And depending on what Ukraine does, sometimes they kind of break apart on their own. But at least in this case, it looks like the answer to that is going to be no. All right, let's say you guys too aggressive. Let's just go ahead and push. Yes, we may take some legacy, uh, some losses, but whatever. Genghis Khan's Legacy by Nikolai Trubotsky. Uh, Eurasianism. Yeah, a look at Russia as far as being a European and an Asian nation, apparently. An interesting concept. We get some more popularity of social conservatism and some base stability. I suppose that's all right. Um, cool. I have no idea what your Eurasian theories, theories are, apparently. But, I mean, cool. Sure. Oh, and we can steal some more blueprints. Let's go ahead and do that once again. We are going to steal some more blueprints as soon as we are ready. Which is now. So go! I don't think I understand how Assyria has actually made as much ground as it has. I still think the Ottomans can win easily enough. I'm just sort of surprised what the heck is going on down there. Interesting. Apparently Oman and Naj are at each other's throats a little bit, by the way. So that's the thing. I had to pull some troops back because we are spending way too much on supply. Uh, because this is all apparently one big zone. And uh, I am losing quite a bit of equipment in doing so right now. So just by telling these guys to go and do their thing without me directly taking control has resulted in significantly more losses against a weaker foe. I mean, that should be a lesson to you right there as far as like why you have to be very careful about letting the AI uh, run fights for you. Let's go ahead and grab that infrastructure. I do think the infrastructure is going to end up being good. I got to pay attention to this right here with the 19 days. Actually, you know what I can do? Can I cancel this for now? Let's cancel this for now and try to build up some of my political power. Uh, because I need to have enough political power to actually respond to this before it ends. Because I don't want to lose the 100 political power automatically. Like, we have to select something. You cannot ignore this as much as you might like to. So, I'm gonna have to click that button in just a few days. But let's get some political power together so I hopefully can actually, you know, annex what I want. By the way, because we got a lot of excavation tech and we have resource prospection, we can expand all of our resources by a lot. Which, again, very good with free trade because it can translate into extra factories. Which I like. I like that a lot, in fact. It's my favorite thing. Free trade area results in profits. Free trade with Ukraine has shown benefits. The borderlands, which was once deserted, are now home to a number of free factories? <laughs> hey! Dude, I told you free trade was great. I don't think that existed in the base game, but at least in Kaiserreich, free trade has profits. Nice. All right, we weren't quite able to get up to the 100 political power I was hoping for. We're going to go ahead and click the button and select it. Now we have to wait on the fate of Kazakhstan. We can restore an independent puppet, or we can spend 40 political power to just annex it outright, which I think I'm going to do. That is enough political power for what I need. Perfect. Let's go ahead and now expand the road. I think that means we'll probably have enough political power to annex these guys as well. And just end all of that nonsense. We do have the delay tactic done. Good. We can get some extra organization and speed for tanks. Which is pretty darn helpful. Um, anything else that I want to do 
and decisions. I don't care about war propaganda, fun though that might be. We did just finish getting some more factories built up, which means they have more uh, civilian factories ready to go. And look at that, we actually have quite a few of them. Not bad, not bad at all. So we should start ramping up our military quite a bit now, if I am seeing that correctly. In fact, we've already filled out everything I wanted. Let's get some more support equipment. Um, we'll need more heavy tanks, more infantry equipment. Um, and then after that, probably a couple more light tanks and artillery, I think. Just so we can supply our armies from there, but mostly I have to focus on building the dang heavy tanks. Once that's done, we can start building up some more fighters and bombers, just for some token air defense, if absolutely nothing else. Are you guys on your way to Bukhara, dang it? Yeah, we're getting there. Okay, slowly but surely we're making our way over here. It's taking for freaking ever, though. Fighting in terrible mountains. Who would have known that this was going to end up being way more costly? than I would have liked. Way more costly. And there goes Turkestan, I get all of their stuff. Thank you. All right, let's take all of their states too, and the Russian Empire grows yet again. Okay. Not that we get much out of that arrangement, it's honestly pretty worthless. Um, where are my options to just go ahead and attack the Socialist Republic of Iran? We were promised extra aggression options. I see no extra aggression options. I would know if I was feeling aggressive. I don't feel nearly aggressive enough. It's my opinion, anyway. All right. Uh, integrate Alash Orda. This is new. Average compliance. We can get cores. Really? In Kaiserreich, if you can get your compliance high enough, you can core territory. Well, that's pretty good. Okay, that actually makes compliance really worth getting at that point. Dang. You can see, unfortunately, out of fighting in the mountains, though, that my light tanks, yeah, we use, like, all of them up. So, that's gonna be an issue. Um, yeah. yeah. Not a fan of that arrangement at all. Uh, if I were to go to you guys and add on, like, a heavy tank and stuff, we could do that. How many do I have? Just enough to make these two un these, uh, five units, I'm sorry, actually pretty good. But not enough values to matter. We really want to be adding it on to you guys. You guys would be the Space Marines if I could pull this one off. 3,000 heavy tanks, though. 3,000 heavy tanks. That's a lot of heavy tanks, dude. I, 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 I can't produce them fast enough for that. All right, we got the research speed. Well, that's something, I guess. Um, it's June of 1938, you say? Okay, well, uh, what do I want? I don't know. Doctrines? Maybe. Close air support? Maybe. Uh, radar? Do sometimes neglect that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and grab the radar, I suppose. Um, hmm. Kind of a weird slump. I really need to get some research bonuses, uh, I think. That would be, that would be ideal. Um, let's go ahead and pop this button now, and we are just going to... We could split them up into two separate puppets, or I can just annex them, and I'm just going to go ahead and do that. All right. Never another Brest-Litovsk. Now that the situation in Russia has begun to stabilize, the Russian people have begun to turn westward. The Treaty of Brest-Litovsk has been paraded as an example of a punitive treaty since its inception, but only now that Russia has gotten confident enough to consider repudiating it. Printing presses are publishing maps and treatises where West, uh, Russia's western neighbors are declared German-occupied western territories. And the local li uh, locals living there are described as suffering awaiting the return of Mother Russia. This is one issue which can unite the Russian right, left, and center, though for different reasons. Russian nationalists obviously seek revenge against Germany, whereas the leftists see Germany as the hegemon, which prevents the rise of socialism and syndicalism in Europe. No matter what regime might be in charge, they will need to place the reconquest of Russia's western territories at the top of that priority list. Few want to see Russia start this war, however. The general line of thought among the Russian populace, intellectuals, and politicians is that Russia needs to wait, observe, and descend like a hawk when Germany is focused elsewhere, i.e. against the Third International. Cunning has saved Russia in countless wars before, and this will be no different. Gain stability and war support while we wait. Yeah, okay, no, that, that does actually seem like a smart idea. Perfect. Okay, so we're hoping to split them off from Ukraine, Ruthenia, Lithuania, and the Baltic Duchy. If we can do that, well then. We might be able to have a little bit of fun. Good place for me to end this video, though. So thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.